Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Cabaret Report Show. Bob, we have a great show today. We are talking with the long, long honeymoon people. We've met them at several shows. They have over 400 videos out on YouTube to help out brand new RVers. And if anything, brand new RVers do need some help. Who are you going to be talking with? I got a great interview with Mike Gray from Diversified Products. They had a U.S. distributor for a product that every RV should have on it. And I'll leave it there until I show you the segment. Oh, the big T's, huh, Bob? Big, big T's. Right. Okay. Those but stories have, plus. have to have one. <laughs> those stories plus all the news of the day coming up on The Camper Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be right back after this. Hey everybody, it's John DePietro along with Bob Zagami and welcome back to the news segment of the Camp Report Show. Bob, we say it every week. Well, actually every week we start off with the new shipments from uh, the prior month, but we're not gonna do that today. Although we know that um, more and more people are buying RVs, using our RVs and enjoying them than ever before. But here's what's happening. And I'm sure you'd agree and our viewers would agree as well. More and more, RV news is popping up on the mainstream media. Would you agree with that, Bob? Absolutely. Radio, television, internet, print publications. You cannot go a single day without seeing something about the RV industry. Yeah, I mean, you know, just last week we turned on the Today Show. There's our friend Janine Pettit talking about uh, Girl Camper and a um, um, RVIA story about how to prep your RV for the summer. Right. But there's a new story that just came out in Forbes magazine that our friends from RV Business, we should say that our news comes in conjunction with RV Business. And it's a Forbes magazine story about the new digital nomad. And um, basically it talks about the fact that the whole lifestyle of work and home and where you work from is changing. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you, you know, the, the interesting part of that isn't necessarily the RV aspect. It's the recognition by many companies that when people return to work now, the entire work-life balance has shifted. And the consensus is that many people are going to find themselves in jobs that are three days a week, Tuesday through Thursday. And it just kind of happened as a result of the pandemic when they realized that people could be very productive working from home and the workers realized they don't have to be sitting in an office, in a cubicle, in a high rise building, in a uh, industrial park five days a week. So then that positions the RV industry and the outdoor hospitality industry in an amazing position because people now have four days a week to recreate, mm -hmm. to enjoy the outdoors, to do other things. Well, let me let me slightly beg to differ with you on a couple of points that you make where you said, well, this the gist of this story is not about RVing. I think it is because of the fact that people can now, once they know that they don't have to be in a certain place at a certain time, like you said, in an industrial park or worse than that, in a downtown office building that they just commuted two hours to, they can go anywhere and they're doing that in RVs. So, so many people are now working from their RV. The other thing is you said, well, they've got a three hour work week. I think people, excuse me, a three day work week. I think people really have a seven day work week because as we found during this pandemic situation, which we hope is in the rear view mirror, people were working longer. They were getting to, you know, they still get up at the same time every day, but they get to their computer at seven in the morning, not at nine o'clock in the morning after that two hour commute, but I think the gist of the article is that people are exploring the country more often, more frequently, and they're able to take their kids with them and, um, you know, either road school or homeschool, whatever. It's it's very interesting phenomenon. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't disagree with that, but it's the the nature of a three day work week provides a productive work life balance that does in fact stretch over seven days. They, they found that out. They're 
they're not they're very willing to contribute to the work environment on a Saturday or a Sunday or eight o'clock at night or or midnight because they have the flexibility in their schedule. They feel better, they feel productive, they feel like they're contributing, but they also feel like it's being compensated by freedom. the company. Yep. The freedom, the freedom of right. not having to the do that from you. Recognition yeah. of how you yep. the recognition of how you do your job really has nothing to do with the way you do your job unless it's an on location yep. occupation. And if you look at results, people perform better when they're in a non-stressed environment. Right, exactly. So with that. Yep. Now, also another story um, about Matthew McConaughey, who was a longtime RVer, and he was interviewed. Uh, we'll put the link down here about why he loves RVing, how it allows him to be free mentally, uh, and yet still carry on his uh, Hollywood career. Pretty yeah, cool he, he was he was interviewed in a podcast from uh, RV Travel that recently launched a uh, a podcast series, and they had and and Matthew McConaughey has been around the media in terms of his love for his airstream and living life uh, in the outdoors and the therapeutic aspects of RV travel. So he's he's been a great spokesman. He he loves to uh, run around the country. He loves boondocking traveling to most of America in his Airstream travel trailer. So yeah. that's, a, that's a good spokesperson to have out there. And it's genuine. It's not, you know, he's done a lot of that without any publicity whatsoever. They yeah. sought him out. He didn't, you know, the difference with him is he, he didn't raise his hand and say, hey, I'm a celebrity. You got to come get me. No, he was he was in his Airstream because he didn't want, want to be the celebrity. Because he didn't want to be, right. He'd be he out in the spotlight, that. right. You know, you bring up that word therapeutic, and it is so true that people tell me that even if they're stuck in traffic, when they're on their way to camping, the stress is much less than if they were on their way to work. So, yeah, yeah. Anyway, now, another thing, you know, one of the negative aspects of all of the publicity that is out there in the mainstream media about camping is that new people are getting into camping. And we knew then when we talked with the people at Bailey's Resort last year, they had some issues with new people, but they kind of like read them, the, read them the rules, read them the riot act, if you will. But there was another unfortunate incident that everybody has to suffer from in Maine. Talk about that. Yeah, this, this wasn't in a campground, but it could right. have been in important, a campground. Important they, to note that it wasn't a campground. Right. It was in, in a tumble down mountain up in Maine, which is used for informal camping. It's not a campground, there's no facilities or what have you, but it's been known as a party place and people have gone up there and it's a lot worse now in that they have left so much trash, human waste. Uh, they, they have trashed the environment that the park, uh, the mountain, the people that control it, the state parks people, they thought about putting in latrines and washrooms and then they said, you know what? We're not going to put in anything. We're going to close the mountain to camping and we're going to send these people somewhere else and we're going to patrol it regularly. And we've had similar stories at campgrounds where people have abused the campsite, left trash in the fire pits, left their trash behind for somebody else to clean up. And it boils down to two words, campground etiquette. They have not, again, uh, a half a million new RV units, the first RV first campground experience. And we as an industry, as an industry, both the RV industry and the outdoor hospitality have to take more responsibility in educating people in camp, proper campground etiquette. Exactly. And I think there was one other story that you, that you had picked out to um, work on yeah. here. I'm not sure that was the case or not. But um, no, I think uh, I think the uh, Forbes, you know, going back to the Forbes article and the uh, the digital natives. But again, the way that people use their RVs, the way that they work in them, the way that they travel in them. And when you see people like Forbes and the Wall Street Journal uh, and the major cable networks and major networks like the Today Show covering this industry, uh, I think we're on a run of maybe five or 10 years of continued yep. growth if we do it right, if we manage the expectations and if we make sure that people have the proper education on how to enjoy the investment that they're going to make 
in an RV and in that camping experience. We'll be back with two great stories right after these important messages. Stay with us, everybody. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out RVLife.com to learn more. Okay, welcome back everybody to the Camper Report Show. And I am delighted today to have Mike Bray with Diversified Power Solutions in Florida. But we're going to talk about a device that, Mike, I honestly think it should be on every RV out there. And I don't, I don't say that about too many products. So tell me about yourself and Diversified, and then we'll get into the gas stop. Bob, thanks for having me on. It's great uh, to spend time with you talking about gas stop. Um, Again, my name is Mike Ray. I have uh, been in retail for close to 30 years. Hate to date myself, but I've been there. Um, and I have just had the pleasure of uh, my company, DPS, of being the importer distributor for Gas Stop into the United States. It's an Anglo-Dutch company. They've been uh, in Europe for many years. They're one of the leading propane safety companies in Europe. Um, and they saw an opportunity in the United States to bring their safety value prop here. So we're proud to be their sponsors into the U.S. You know, that was one of the things that was so impressive about the product. Um, and the, the reason I really wanted to have you on the show, because as you know, in the RV industry today, we are selling a half a million new RVs a year, and half of them are going to first-time buyers. And there are a lot of them that drive off the lot that may not even know propane is the energy model for that unit. And they really don't know a lot about propane. They know they want to have an RV. They know they want to go out there. Uh, it's a very safe gas. Tell us a little bit about propane in general, because these people are going to the campgrounds for the first time. I think you're right. It is actually a, a pretty safe power source. You know, it's got a lot of energy in that, you know, container. It enables RVers to go off and boondock and gives them uh, a lot of staying power. Um, and also to your point, it, you know, it is something that is just not going to blow up. There's a lot of safety that they've put into it. Um, but one thing that we found, and as we looked more into the U.S. model, um, I, just most RVers don't know that there is no safety device currently on any of the RVs that have been being built, 10 million that are already out there. Uh, that have propane on board that shuts down the flow of propane a hundred percent, like totally shuts it down. If for any reason they have a major leak or a fire, anything ever happens in the RV, there's nothing currently in the system that'll shut it off hundred percent. That's where gas stop adds such value. And that's why tens of thousands of folks have put it on to their RVs in this last year and a half since we've come on because they've recognized it's just a way to de-risk um, a potential, you know, the, the, it will not happen tomorrow, but it's one of those things. If I have control and I have the ability to take risk away from me as I'm out in the campground, uh, it's a very low investment kind of a return. Well, you know, and I think the important thing to note is that with this increased activity and, and all these new people coming into the RV industry and with the detriments of social media, and, and we all love social media, but there are many people who think they are experts at everything because they can hide behind a computer and, and tell people they're stupid, it's wrong, don't do it. And, and people tend to believe it. So having an expert opinion and having products that actually solve that risk aversion factor become very important. But it's also necessary that consumers get the right education from the right sources. Talk to us about your distribution system and how the product is getting into uh, RV parts and accessory stores, dealerships, and eventually the consumer buys it and has it installed on the system. Great question. I think, Bob, one thing we figured out and why we at DPS got excited about it is uh, DPS has got 
basically around 25 years uh, of safety background, but mostly in the power uh, protection side. We have search protection products on the commercial side. So our DNA is around safety. If you look outside and you look at the telephone lines, all of your cable amplifiers and power supplies, a lot of them around the country are protected by DPS products. So we help you with your broadband, et cetera. And so we've been living that safety side. So when introduced to Gas Stop, uh, one of the thing, first things we did, because we're not the smartest kids on the block, is that we talked to people much smarter than us, which are full-time RVers that are out there living in their RVs and care very deeply about their safety and know a lot about them. So the way we learned about it was through them. So we have a, a network of, uh, uh, today is 15, but like this morning, another group signed on, of people that took gas stop, beat it up. Their, their stock and trade is the trust of the people that follow them on YouTube, et cetera. And uh, if they think something sucks, they, you know, they've tried it and said, they'll tell you, right? And so, but if it works, they'll spread the word because that is the value they add to people to introduce some new products. So in our distribution, we started with them and we ended up just going slow, just starting with them, having them really get the word out, telling us how we should really be respectful of the community and how we come into the community and not scare people, your RV is gonna blow up tomorrow. You know, it's just, here's, here's a way to just de-risk something. And then we moved into really amazing folks. And if you look at our uh, Gas Stop USA uh, website, you'll see the, the network of people now that we've, been, we've earned, you know, just really great distributors out in the marketplace that are trusted by um, folks to the marketplace. And you'll see uh, Techno RV, who does an amazing job bringing out, and you'll see videos that they do of right. various products, including right. Gas Stop. Yep. Rec Pro, uh, One Source. Again, the list goes on. Um, we're in Camping World. We're in General RV. We're in Lazy Days. Uh, each which does does a magnificent job for their individual customer group. Yep, and it, you know, and it's the type of product that, uh, from a dealership standpoint, I, I you know encourage all dealers to uh, pick up the product and, and display it. But it can be sold in the parts and accessory store but it can also be sold in the service department. Just think of every RV that comes in, it ought to turn around and go out with a gas stop on it. It's a, it's a very inexpensive insurance policy for what it does for the RVer. You're absolutely right. And uh, the place that most uh, dealers that we're working with uh, have seen success this is a new product. It's a year and a half old in the United States. So it's still people that don't know what it is. Um, uh, even though there's, you know, again, tens of thousands of folks that have it on, you know, you got over 10 million plus people in that community. So uh, most dealers have seen success when they're introducing new, uh, a new RV or used RV to uh, somebody just bought it. So they're taking them through the walkthrough and they're working through the subsystems, just like they would talk to a customer around why you need surge protection, right? So surge protection, because nobody wants to lose thousands of dollars of electronics, right? They don't want to be in the middle of a three-week trip and one weekend, oops, I've lost TV, I've lost everything. So just like that subsystem, they should be introducing uh, the customer to their propane system, like you'd said around education, helping understand what are the safety products on there. Um, gas stop is a natural uh, introduction point right there. Because yeah. that really helps the customer know, okay, here's here's how I need to handle. I'm a little nervous about propane. Here's how you can look after that. Yeah, and and something that I speak frequently of, you know, on this show and our, our other shows on the internet, is managing the customer's expectations. You know, years ago, when we didn't have social networking, it was all face-to-face -face communications around the campfire in the campground, and people would talk about new right. and new services. Well, now again with, with social media, there's there's too much misinformation. So it's the responsibility of the dealers to do more in terms of managing the expectation of these people that are coming into us and into the industry for the first time because they don't know what this industry was like for the last 30 or 40 years. Their grandparents did and their parents did because it was a different way of communicating than what we have today. So I'd, I'd like to see that, that educational aspect become firsthand. You know, and this is also something that campgrounds could sell. Um, they, they have these little parts and accessory type stores, but 
it's something, uh, have you seen traction in the campground industry at all? Uh, not as much, you know, again, new product. Um, I think campgrounds are so busy right now. There's so much velocity going. I think they're to a few commodity items in their stores and really that's it. Right. And so again, in a new product introduction, a little bit tougher in a campground, but one thing that, you know, that we've been pretty excited about is the idea that when you're buying a gas top, you get a little sticker, you put that on the propane door. So when you're in a campground, I think there's that peace of mind that comes, I'm looking left and right and I'm seeing, you know, RVs protected by gas stop. So I feel even safer, right? Because I've got these, uh, you know, these RVs. If I smell propane, gas stop does three things really well. Not only does it shut off the flow of propane hundred percent, if you did have a leak, at the same time, it helps you within two minutes do a quick minor leak check. So if I'm an RVer out on the road, it's in, it's really hard unless I smell it or I have an indicator screaming at me inside the cabin that I've got a leak. It's really hard for me to control and go and see if I've got a minor leak anywhere in my system. So within two minutes, having a gas stop on, I can basically run a quick check and anywhere in my system, if I have a minor leak, a small connection came loose as I was bouncing around, you know, between sites uh, or these critters tend to love that soy based hose, rubber hose, right? Mm -hmm. So if they've taken a bite out of one, I don't know this, right? I've had it in storage for six months. I bring it out in two minutes. I basically can run a quick minor leak check. Um, it's not just a place I spray it. It's behind a bulkhead. I will know between my tank and the back of the appliance, I'll know whether or not I got full integrity. And the third thing it does is, and we overlook it a lot, is that pressure gauge. It's not perfect, right? It will not tell you exactly the liquid level of your propane, but it definitely gives you an indication before you run out. So you don't wake up at two in the morning, it's hot, it's cold as heck outside and you don't have propane, right? Yeah. So those are three things. It's a great major leak, shuts it off 100%, two minor leak, I smell propane within two minutes, I don't know if it's me or the RV next door. And three, I never run out of propane because I know what's going on. Makes sense? It, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, we're going to uh, put some information down below about the product. We'll throw some graphics in and make this look real pretty. Uh, but I want to thank you. I'm talking to Mike Gray from Diversified Power Solutions. We're talking about the gas stop, a, a very unique device, which, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add it to all my seminars because I, I present a lot of seminars at consumer shows. And this is some, these are the types of things that sometimes go unnoticed, but they're the most important things that should be elevated to a level of education and, and consumerization that pe let people know how to enjoy the, they, they enjoy the RV, enjoy it even better with peace of mind. Any closing thoughts for our fans, Mike? I think the one they just keep watching out for us, we're just introducing a new product called Gas Gear. So the innovation out of the Europeans are just, is just amazing. So now Gas Gear is a new set of pigtail hoses, et cetera, that are 90 degree uh, bends to them with a big piece of brass. There's a lot of concern in the marketplace around how good pigtails are. So we've created an entire line because of our knowledge that we're starting to understand the propane business in the U.S., they turned around something within a few months. So you'll see that hit the marketplace as well. So a lot of innovation is still coming. And so I'm excited about keeping contact with you as we continue to do this. Well, you know, one thing we didn't talk about real quick here at the end, uh, how about the home barbecue grills? Ah, it's funny you bring it up. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Camper Report Show. My name is John DiPietro. And you know, on the RV trail, when you're out on the trails where the RVs are, you meet the nicest people. And the couple that we're going to introduce you tonight are a couple of the nicest people. 
in all of the RV business that we've been around in, I don't know, 15 years or so. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome them here to the Camper Report show. We are talking with Sean and Christy Michael. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, John. The truth is, she's the nice one. Uh. I'm more the naughty one. I'm one of the naughtiest people, but her nice and nice. So <laughs> fantastic. That, that terminology, naughty and nice. <laughs> That's what Santa Claus taught me. What have you done? Exactly. You're trying to, to dig <laughs> your way out. Yeah. She is so incredibly nice that she sort of lifts all boats around oh. her. All boats around her, exactly. <laughs> so, you know what? The RV industry is booming now like never before. And you see so many new people coming onto the scene and talking about this, talking about that. But you guys have been, you're, you know, you're veterans. I mean, you've got, you know, almost a, a quarter of a million people uh, that subscribe to your YouTube videos and your YouTube videos get... Uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of views and that type of thing. And one of the things that all of our viewers always write to me about when I have a guest on, they said, you didn't, you didn't ask them what it was like before they became celebrities, so to speak. Uh, right. so give us a little bit about your background, where you're from and what you did prior to uh, being noted RVers. <laughs> well, I'll let you answer. You know, we're both from the state of Alabama. Neither of us really grew up RV camping. No. So it, it was a new experience for us, you know, when we got into RV travel. Before we started doing what we do, I was kind of in between jobs, I guess I would say. I had a background in, in internet content back in the 90s, and I wanted to learn how to make movies. I wanted yeah. to be uh, Francis Ford Coppola or Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. But, th but then I, I realized quickly I was way too cheap to finance a movie and I was too lazy to raise tons of money to do a movie. So I had the perfect <laughs> movie star right here that I was getting married to. Uh, and I just thought, we'll make movies about our RV travels. Yeah. Now, before... <laughs> before our RV life started, I worked in the nonprofit world. I did fundraising for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So... I planned all sorts of events and golf tournaments and school fundraisers and things like that. So I was very used to getting up in front of a crowd of people and talking about whatever subject at hand of the day was. So I was a journalism major in college. So I sort of had that background and, you know, we just sort of went from there. I think really Sean ended up going back and doing sort of like a film school boot camp and, um, really learned the basics of sort of filmmaking. Yeah. And then from there, it was just trial and error, I think, for a while. And there was this uh, new service that just come onto the scene <laughs> called YouTube. Yeah. And you could go onto this YouTube service <laughs> and upload your short video clips. And in those days, uh, now I was shooting videos to videotape. So I had yeah. an old fashioned camcorder. It tells yep. you how long ago this was. <laughs> so I was lugging <laughs> around this tape, tape. Not the two inch tape. No, it was the mini DV tape. Okay, okay, yeah. And, but you know, it was such a pain to get a video on the internet in those days because you had to shoot it onto tape, pull that tape off into a, com into a computer, you know, and then do the editing if you're editing and upload. And there was just a lot of steps that you had to yeah. go through. And just finding internet connections, you know, was difficult oh. as well. Because it wasn't, Wi-Fi wasn't really a thing. And we were doing this before the smartphone. Yeah, was, we didn't a have thing. a smartphone our first year. And, you know, we, and, we still had flip phones. Yeah. And, you know, isn't it amazing how, how the ease of production has... Um, has Absolutely. gotten there, which, you know, you had to have some of the skills for editing to put the videos together that you have, but the technology of today is certainly totally different than it was back then. You know, you said Alabama, and two <laughs> things come to mind when I hear the word Alabama. Number one is Roll Tide. Thank you. War Eagle. And I'm an Alabama fan. She, <laughs> she's an Auburn. Married, the arch rival, that's right. Yes, she, Auburn. Auburn, yes. Auburn, okay. And the I've other thing is... There. Tiffin Motorhomes up in Red Bay. Yeah, That's right. Absolutely. Yep. 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 So yep. how long, how long have you been on the road? How long you been out there um, making things happen? Our first season with our Airstream and actually the reason that our channel is called Long Long Honeymoon, we'd just gotten married 
in mm -hmm. the year 2007. So we actually started the YouTube channel in late 2006. We got married and we'd just gotten our Airstream. And so we went on the road for a good three or four month honeymoon yeah. with our RV throughout North America and started a blog about that time called Long, Long Honeymoon, really just as a way to, to uh, keep friends and family up to date. In those days, there was no clear way how to make Nobody money. knew what YouTube was. Right. You Nobody, know? I mean, <laughs> YouTube, you couldn't have videos longer than two or three minutes long. There was right. no advertising. Yep. There were no sponsors really in those days. And we didn't even have an audience. Yeah. So like when we started, it was just out of passion for what we were doing and what we were creating, wanting to share it with other people. Yeah. So our friends and family could sort of follow along and see where we were going and what crazy things we were doing. And, you know, because when we did this, it was so um, bizarre that we were doing it because, you know, at that point in time, I think most people that went traveling for long periods of time in an RV were retired, you know, they were older and retired. And, you know, I was 29 the first year where we went and Sean, I guess was 37. And so, you know, we were usually the youngest people in the campground and people thought we were kind of nuts for what we were doing. We got a lot of comments from people that were like, Oh, you'll either end up divorced or you'll be married forever. You know? <laughs> yeah. So you, you certainly, didn't I remember the de you certainly didn't fit the demographics of, right. of the no. rest of the people. And today, when you see the young people that are going out there now, if you've been married a few years and um, you know, you don't have kids or dogs and stuff like that, people say, well, why don't you hit the road? And, right, uh, right, exactly. You know, and today, more, more people are working remotely, yep. you know, using yep. Zoom to have their meetings and so forth. Yeah. Homeschooling online is so much more accessible for families. So people that want to travel with their kids, it's not quite the, you know, overwhelming task that it used to be. I know you've got a, um, an extensive collection of gear that you sell through <laughs> the Amazon process. But back then, what were you doing for revenue in order to uh, stay on the road? It was pretty slim pickings back then. <laughs> a lot of uh, ramen noodles. But, <laughs> no, you know, uh, for my previous business, I sort of. Uh, well, I had built a business yeah, and sold it. Yeah. And I, and I okay. did some video work on the side too. As mm -hmm. I was, you know, developing my video skills, I was, you know, shooting some commercials here and there and some just freelance type of things but you know and and long long honeymoon was kind of a, a passionate creative project that i knew was going to take a long time to bear fruit and yeah. that's kind of the way it was where the, it the was first not year, a get rich quick scheme no, no. <laughs> i remember in those days it was so hard to even get a video posted i used to grumble that no one will ever do this because it's such a pain in the butt <laughs> like it's way too much work, you know, to do exactly. it. But, you know, now, as we've discussed, there's so many yeah. tools to allow people to do it. And the wonderful thing is so many different revenue streams have come about. I mean, with the affiliate sales uh, and advertising and sponsorships and so forth, you know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of different ways for people to generate income. And including like Patreon and, you know, you can have sponsors, yep. individual sponsors of your channel. Yeah, we don't do too many corporate sponsorships and we just haven't really pursued that route. Uh, we've done a couple over the years, but we do get approached by companies all the time, but we like to keep a pretty independent voice. Then you can yeah. say what you want. Exactly. Right. <laughs> so of all the traveling that you've done, uh, well, two questions. Right now you're in an Airstream. So you're hauling one. Okay. What you say, 2003? Yes. Last right. Okay, yep. that you've, you've had done over and, and the outside coated and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, the beauty of the Airstream is that whether it's a 2003 or 2022, it looks pretty similar, at least from the outside. It really does, yeah. Um, In fact, we updated our front rock guards on the on the. Oh, unit. yeah, yeah. They were showing their age. And so now we have um, the modern rock guards. We have the updated badging. So the logos on the front and rear. And we have the ceramic coating on it. And I think it looks fantastic, yeah. honestly. I mean, it looks, it, it holds its own against the brand new units if mm -hmm. you park it next to it. Yeah, exactly. So we've got about a minute left. Favorite places that you've been? Um, I think the, the creme de la creme when you're RV camping is really Yellowstone National Park and Grand Teton National Park, just because of the unique setting and then the amount of wildlife that you will see there. 
is just really hard to beat in the lower 48 for sure. Yeah, we tend to go back to the Tetons every year. I mean, we've been pretty much every year yeah. with a couple of exceptions. Alaska's amazing. It's, you know, quite a haul to get there, but it's certainly worth it once you make it there. Yeah, I would say my favorite overall trip was that Alaska journey, mm -hmm. it, but it was How also the that? most demanding. It was about a 14,000 mile round trip. Oh, that is. Road we trip. did it over the course of about five months oh, okay. from leaving mm -hmm. Alabama to getting there and then yeah. making it way back, back to Alabama. Back. Like, um, that is a wild trip. <laughs> words of wisdom to people that are saying, wow, I'd like to do what you all have done. Something that you said, you know, Sean, we should have done it this way. And he'll right. say, well, Christy, if you had told me that, but, um, <laughs> You know, I would say on our channel, we do a lot of videos for beginners because I always remember there are many people in our audience who are still learning the difference between gray water and black water. Yeah, you know, they're, they're not <laughs> sure what to do uh, yeah. with propane or how to turn on their oven. And we have been there and we have made a lot of mistakes over the years and a lot of goofs. We've had a lot of things go wrong we keep the cameras rolling and we <laughs> tell people about our mistakes. And I think we have helped people avoid make mistakes. Yeah. So my first advice would be go watch long, long watch it. <laughs> look for those beginners playlists. Yeah. I would say be realistic. Uh, we meet people all the time that they're like, we want to do a trip to Yellowstone from South Carolina and we're going to do it in two weeks. Two weeks. And I'm <laughs> like, no, don't do that. Don't you try know? that. Don't yeah, I think, yeah. you know, yeah. slow and steady is the way to win the race so that you actually enjoy your trip. Because if you try to go too far, too fast, you're just going to run yourself ragged and you're going to be miserable. <laughs> yeah, you said slow and steady, but the, unfortunately, our time is going fast and furious. Yeah. I'd like to ask you to come back with us at another time in the future. In the meantime, um, tell us that website that people can go to. to um, and then the website uh, will... Oh. longlonghoneymoon.com or just if you look on youtube for long long honeymoon or the we call it low loho as an abbreviation sometimes hello hello -O. -O 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 -O. and so if, if they look for that they'll find us yeah and right. we have a playlist on our youtube channel of you know videos for newbies so if you're somebody that's inexperienced or you haven't done it in a long time and you want a refresher find it find Perfect. Hey, thank you so much, Sean and Christy Michael. Thank you, John. We really us. appreciate you having us. It was a pleasure. Us.